Let the dragon consume you! <laughs> Kill me to be excited. All right, welcome back. And this week, we are talking week three contenders. Uh, we have a little bit of Overwatch news as well. Um, yeah. But back first. Back contenders, man. Yeah. Is this a first? Yeah. Yeah, I'm de- uh, pretty excited, man. It's great. We have Get to see any of this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but first, Ryan, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I've been doing some laddering. Um, yeah. Playing a lot more games this season than I have in the past. I think I'm about at 150. Uh, the season so far, around like 2,800 or bouncing around that area. So still kind of moving up. I, I think everybody's holding their breath for tomorrow afternoon to see if that patch finally drops. Oh, yeah. That'd Rogan be good. no longer one-shots people. So <laughs> We'll see. Uh, not to interrupt, I, I can tell you're drinking beer, Ryan. What do we got going? <laughs> <laughs> what is this week's episode sponsored by? Uh, Molson. Okay, Most Canada's good. finest, yeah, from the from the yeah. homeland, man. Yeah. Got to represent. It's like it's it's my drink of my beer of choice if I can find it. You don't get it imported from Canada. No, no, it's actually it would be more expensive. That's the joke, right? So Molson here uh, for a case, you're looking at about thirteen bucks, whereas if you bought it in Toronto, no less than like twenty five. Thirteen bucks. That's that's like two six packs yeah. of. Uh, the one of my favorite beers, the champagne of beers, Miller yeah. High Life. <laughs> uh, but oh, we are on man. episode 31. Yeah. Uh, we do have some Overwatch League news that we uh, we finally are going to touch on some of the, the team changes. We've kind of put this off for a little bit, and we'll have a big episode, obviously, talking about who's on which roster. But there's just been yeah. some, some big stuff come up. You know, come up in this last week that uh, we yeah. definitely wanted to touch on. Yeah, um, we, want, we want to wait until you know the back and forth is done, and then we just have the rosters to read off, yeah. where everybody else is kind of you know taking as it comes, and there's some you know leagues here and they're wrong. It's it's a fa- very fast pace moving uh, train that we're not going to try to catch when it comes to these rosters and these reveals. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the first one, and I think this came out today, mm-hmm. uh, Washington Justice in the red, white, and blue. Yeah, you know, so my thing was, I think they have the most, first of all, lackluster name. Yeah, don't uh, love it. Lackluster colors, because they're just the USA colors. Yep. Um, we get it, it's in D.C., but they also took the longest. <laughs> yeah, to <laughs> come up like, with anything. Yep. Yeah, you, you, they didn't surprise us with anything at all. Um, so I guess their roster will kind of speak for itself once they reveal that. Yeah, hopefully actually, that's not lackluster because then if you're the last one to go. You, you're supposed to end with a showstopper, right? That's how it works. Right, right. Something crazy off, yeah. the, off the bat there. But well, uh, I, they actually got spoiled by um, a mistimed article. They were yeah. introducing somebody else, and they put Washington Justice, and they were like, well, shit, now we have to come out with something. Uh, second, Vancouver Titans, now which that, we heard about a couple days ago, right? Yeah, we finally got it. Team Runaway. Yeah, this is where Runaway ended up for the most part, which is I, – I'm Like all of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the subs even flowering. Flowering's yeah. on the team as well. I'm, I'm interested to see how much the runaway name will stick to this. You know, obviously they're a new team as yeah. far as like a name and and brand and whatnot. So will it be the Vancouver Titans runaway? Who knows? I think uh, with but the fans, the blue and, and green. Yeah, I think yeah, the Canucks blue and green. I think with the um, how strong their fan base is, they have no choice but to keep that that history um, sure. intact in some place. And there might be even be like a cross campaign, not even cross campaign, but a cross kind of recognition of, hey, we're now the Titans, but we were the Runaways. Like everything starts in a, they'll probably do like a inspirational video and all this stuff. Um, yeah. But the animation on their logo reveal was actually really cool. I like like the the screaming Yeti and how the hair kind of like. Is that a Yeti or a Sasquatch? You know what? I think it's a Yeti. I I, I think they're the same. I don't know the differences. Mm. I don't know the nuances of you know as a scientist. I, as I, a, I don't yeah. know. 
<laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's a, he's a beastly guy. Yeah. Uh, and then third, which we heard about a couple weeks ago, uh, the Chengdu Hunters, which they, they got a logo. Uh, we got some colors. I, I really like this colorway. And I like the logo, man. He's uh, it's a cute little panda. Yeah, do uh do pandas hunt? No, they don't. <laughs> they don't hunt at all. They hunt for bamboo, which I think they just live in bamboo for it. So they just they can't actually hunt and it down. So. It's funny because I think the whole reason they were on the verge of extinction in the first place was because they're so poor at hunting or yeah. doing whatever they do. They needed outside assistance to maintain. Right, right. They're like the chicken, the modern day yeah. chicken. We have to like keep them going, or they'll just die. Uh, but some guys that we we know from the Chinese Overwatch World Cup team, Late Young, yeah. Fettel on the team. So excited to see what they got. Wait, wait, I want to make fun of you. Say that one more time. It's Fettel. It's, it's a. I think <laughs> he's Evital. from Evital. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm going with <laughs> you know, I was like, that sounds Jewish. He's he's from Sweden. <laughs> Right. He's with, his, his parents are Chinese. He moved to Sweden. At Strong an early start. Age. I had to. Yeah. I had to call you on that one. That's yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's, hopefully, it's a sound clip. When reading that back yeah. to myself earlier, I was like, "That's how it's pronounced." I'm not even going to look this up. <laughs> I don't care. The confidence. Yeah. Uh, and no one would have known unless you. Uh, yeah. Until you called me. Schmettel. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, let's see if I can get this next one right. Uh, the Gongzu. Right. Charge. Yeah. That sounds right. Okay. Zhao, sweet. Gung Zhou, uh, yeah. And this is a mixed team, mm-hmm. uh, Chinese and Korean. Yeah. Uh, and a, a British guy, KYB. Oh, yeah. Keeb. Which, uh, okay. not Keeb, is Kib. Why do we do this yeah. every time? Yeah. I'm saying KYB. That's way cooler. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And then uh, Hoppa, Eileen on there as well. So pretty dope. Oh, pretty yeah. Dope we got too. Hoppa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Hoppa cool. did well. He came in late on, um, Philadelphia Fusion? Uh, I think you're right there. Yeah. Uh, we should know this, but I drank a lot, so I forget everything. Yeah, he came came in late on that team and, you know, did some work. So it's good to see him, him sticking around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and another big thing, which also I think came out this morning, was Overwatch uh, signed its first esports merch deal with Fanatic. So yes. no longer getting stuff out of the... Uh, the Blizzard store, mm-hmm. which little uh, you sent me the link for the sale, and you know I was I was I, I was happy that you sent it to me. I was a little upset too, though. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. why. I bought some stuff last year, full fucking price, hundred percent. And I see, oh, my bomber jacket, which oh, I no. never wear, regardless. Yeah. It's twenty five bucks. It was a hundred dollars last year. <laughs> You're screwing me here, Blizzard. Got him. You're screwing me. Yeah. But no, that's a uh, cool deal. I, I'm hoping that something that comes out as a deal is because I've I've never been a fan of the fact that all of the jerseys are the same template. Yep. Uh, and I hope that this deal allows them to get with each team and design more custom-based jerseys. Because with all the pop-up stores that have been happening, you know, NYXL being a great example, they have a lot of, you know, more stylistic streetwear and approaches that kind of fit the the personality of that team versus having this fall within a template right right so that yeah. could be cool yeah we see it in uh, regular sports all the time right we they partner with nike yeah. nike makes a special jersey or reebok yeah. or you know one of these bigger brands but yeah this will definitely open up for the, uh, you, the artists I, out there i haven't seen any of their other stuff i should probably look into their cat like their catalog for their other partnerships or whatever they do yeah absolutely get an idea what we're going into yeah. um Another article that uh, came out today was, I thought it was a great read. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought it was a great read because I just got back from Philadelphia, and it you know had me oh, thinking. That's right, yeah, yeah, it was dope, man. And uh, wait, how was people, how was the cheesesteak? How was the Philly cheesesteak? That was uh, that was actually the most disappointing part about Philadelphia for me. What, dude? We're gonna get flamed. You can't say that shit on there. <laughs> I mean, people in Philly will probably tell you the exact same thing. They're not going to be like, this is what we're known for, man. They're known for, I don't know, the, the city is very gritty, but very cool yeah. at the same point. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of spunk to it, I guess, yeah. and a lot of culture. But yeah, not not the most, as food-wise, I had a lot better food there than Philly. What is Philly cheese? Like it's cheese, it's bread, it's steak. It's okay, uh, right? Uh, oh, okay. I, I don't know. All right, let's I not get into it. Let's stop, because we're already, I, we're going to get letters. We're gonna get, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this has gone too far already. Philly guys, people from Philly, they know yeah. that I love them. I drank in all their bars. Uh, they bought me beers. Yeah. They know they love me. So, so, just, so but, just, just for the count, we have Schvedel, and then we have <laughs> <laughs> cheesesteaks ain't shit in Philly. <laughs> That's this is where we're starting, Clay. <laughs> right? They're gonna. They're definitely gonna hate me, but they know that I'm right. 
<laughs> but this article, man, is good yeah. because Fraggy talks uh, home games, what we have, you know, in the future when teams are moving to uh, their city of origin, uh, yeah. what it's going to be like. Because uh, when they did, you know, some of these uh, uh, expedition map expedition, <laughs> Ex- <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Exhibition. Ex- I'm here for you. Man. I can't even. I'm always here for you. At this I got point. You back. Yeah. <laughs> These matches where people were coming to Philly, um, the fans, man, they were already very pumped to see this team, and yeah. they were a little scary for the teams that had to go to Philly. They're so gritty. They're so into their sports, man. Yeah. You, you, no one hates the Philadelphia Eagles sports teams. I think they hate <laughs> the fans. Yeah, because they are so into it. They're so intimidating. They're rabid like Raiders fans, man. Yeah, I mean. A little story from when I was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a, a Eagles game that Sunday. And it probably started at like two, and I woke up at around eight. And these guys on the block already hammered, drunk, <laughs> eight o'clock in the morning, just ready for this game, just yelling. Oh, it was, it was an exciting time. Yeah. Uh, last Sports. bit of news. Yeah, absolutely. Last bit of news. Boston trades striker to the shock. Yeah. That's Which, uh, we, we have a lot of trades, but this one is really stuck out to me, and it. it it's a big one, I feel like. Yeah, and it lines up with kind of, you know, there was some promotion stuff. Not promotions, but just there was some news out of them anyways. And, like, Stryker always seemed to be left out. And everybody's yep. like, that's kind of weird um, since he was your premier guy. And now this makes sense, right? Because obviously they're trading him. So, yeah, um, they wouldn't promote him. Stryker's also been one of those verbal guys that does not like the current meta. Um, obviously, really good at Tracer, does not like getting forced over. And that yeah. might have been a big part of it, that he probably did not want to get forced over to you know getting stuck on uh, yeah. a, a hero that he doesn't like to play. So, But let's get into contenders. Uh, how are we stacking up for the week, run? Yeah, so once again, we're bringing you three matches, guys. We're, we're doing it, same, same format. Um, and we're starting with South America Group. I know, right? Um, yeah. Yet another game that I watched in a different language. Uh, <laughs> well, one thing I have to say is it is hype. Um, South American commentary sounds like you're watching soccer or football for you fans out there. But it's amazing. And there's so much energy to it that I left it on full blast just because it kept me hyping into the game. And the game itself was actually really solid. So we're going to go over the uh, looking for team OWL and versus looking for org. Uh, which is fitting. I wonder if this is considered like a rival match. Just because they're both looking for just, something. I don't know. Just for the because of the name? Right. The names alone. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. it was, it's a big back and forth. They start off on Ilios. Uh, looking for Org here tries a 3 2 1, which we've seen some teams do to try to get outside that. Um, what is it? The GOATS. The GOATS comp. But the the reason it falls short here, short here and it, it could have worked because they're on Ruins. And they decide to use Widowmaker for that one DPS spot. But Low Life is their Widowmaker. And I, I'm i going to start now. So if you listen to our last episode, for this episode, Low Life is my Milky Man. And I don't, I don't like to pick on these guys. And naturally, these guys are better than I'll ever be, right? That's, that's, that's written in stone. But it's a case where a lot of the decisions here and the performance does not meet what I expected, um, especially from the rest of the team. But yeah, low life here. He's on Widow, but he's unable to get the picks they need, so it doesn't justify the comp, and they end up falling behind the goats um, coming out of uh, looking for team here. So they uh, lose that first one. Looking for team could have won the second one uh, for round two on Wells, but they overextend. So there's a lot of in in this in the South American games. I do see a lot of uh, mistakes being made, uh, more more larger mistakes than you would see in a, I don't want to say, like a higher caliber uh, tee-off kind of thing. But yeah, so looking for team struggles here in round two, and then LFO ends up taking it uh, by, so Searchy's their Lucio player, right? And Searchy's super aggressive. Uh, think like a Verbo or a, uh, like a Bonnie type. And he's super aggressive here, booping people all over the place, and he actually wins them that second round by closing it out by booping somebody into a well. And then we move, they take that same momentum, and they just completely roll the, the last one. So it starts off real strong here for looking for org. Um, and then we continue on where, you know, low life kind of plagues this team. There's a couple of places where it stands out. Um, on Nubani, there's a case where I would give him the excuse if they were playing against goats, but not they don't the whole time. Like looking for team doesn't play goats completely throughout this whole thing. Both teams actually bounce between uh, different comps. 
So on Numbani, look, Ella, uh, Low Life ends up playing. He tries Genji, he tries Doomfist, and he tries Widow. And the problem isn't so much that he's not getting kills because there is a moment where he does pop off on Widow and get like a three a three K chain and clean up. But outside of that, he just dies a lot. Um, and it's not so much to protection either. It's usually him being out of position. And the reason I point that out as far as him being out of position is because um, on his same team, you have Balti. And Balti is their Zenyatta player, their flex healer position. And his positioning is amazing. If you watch any of these games and you look at where he is when he's either playing Moira, he, he plays Moira and Zenyatta mainly um, here. And his Zenyatta placement is perfect. Like he's always like within range of contesting point while being within his team, but being as far from the team as from the opponents as possible. So it makes it very difficult for them to get to him. And it's not so much like his tanks are giving him the ultimate protection. This isn't like an NYXL type uh, protection against Jonak, right? How it's impossible to get a Jonak. It's not. He's just real good at it. And he actually wins them a couple rounds here just on the just on the basis of where he's positioned and how he's uh, extending fights. He's great at extending fights. But for Numbani, same thing, like I said, low life has a lackluster performance here. And this time, um, looking for a team takes advantage of that, right? We move into Hanamura, which this would be your map of the match, <laughs> mainly because it goes to six rounds. Or, yeah, it's six rounds, right? Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, if it goes one minute, one minute, they both yeah, okay, so they're, double yeah. cap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so they end up going to six rounds, um, which, which settles with... <laughs> okay, so looking for team, their main tank is... Oh, no, I'm blanking. Uh, Fasty, right? And Fasty has a couple plays here on Reinhardt where he kind of drops the ball. But the biggest one is on on attack, their last attack attempt they get, right? Where they could, they need to cap it so they continue because previously um, LFO was able to cap both points in overtime in that uh, second round. He gets the shatter. Great shatter, by the way. He gets popped up in the air, comes down, shatters. Uh, Searchy, who's their Lucio player, is laid out from the shatter, and he charges and misses the charge. And Searchy ends up staying alive, comes back around the corner on the first point, and ends up extending that whole fight so that they can get a second rally and they end up stopping them. And that's hard to excuse. I mean, that's not even a case of, like, skill gap or anything. It's just, like, you need... He's not moving. The character's not moving. The character's laying down. You have to just go straight. There's no corners he had to turn, but he ends up doing this hard turn and misses him completely and botches the whole thing. Um, once again, low life. <laughs> they, they win this one, but low life's performance here, once again, he tries. He adds Junkrat and Reaper to characters that I think he thinks he can play, um, but performs poorly here. He dies on Reaper very often, ends up switching back to Zarya. And that's the crazy part, is that every time he switches to Zarya, he does well. So I'm not sure if he's a flex player or if he is a DPS. And because of GOATs, that's where he falls as far as the character he has to play. Um, have you seen that kind of like, that's usually how it works, right? Like the DPS player usually takes the Zarya position. For yeah, GOATs. generally, because Zarya is kind of the main DPS when you see the GOATs comps because they're getting a lot of you know, high charge, a lot of energy. Um, and they're kind of the main DPS there besides Ryan swinging. Yeah, a lot of the times it is their flex player or one of their flex DPS players switches over to Zarya. And you see it in almost all these matches where they teams will try to do something besides GOATs and you'll have somebody start as like a Widow and they'll go over to the Zarya and they'll you know go to over another tank generally. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that puts us at, let's see, we had looking for org is now 2-1. And then, you know, the last two maps is where LF... Uh, looking for team kind of takes over again. Um, their Br Brogan player, um, okay, I'm gonna try to pronounce this correctly. Suaron, Suaron, I think is how you pronounce it. It's S U A R A N. Um, he actually plays defense on the Dorado map with Torp, and he is does it Sauron? really well. Uh, I don't think it's so Suaron, it, it, it's Suaron or something like that. Oh, okay. it, there's kind of like an inflection to it, how they say it. Um, oh, I gotcha. Pretty sure it's Portuguese, but. Yeah, he plays Torb here on defense, which, you know, they're ahead here, and it works out really well. Uh, it actually allows Low Life to play better on Widow because he's creating that space that he didn't really have um, and allowing him to do to get some snipes and so on and so forth. Um, he plays that, like, in between the tank line and where Widow is set up, allows him to get some picks there, and it helps him out. Uh, we do have the biggest play 
out of all these matches is uh, Agon, which is their um, their flex or their off tank, their diva player, has a team kill diva bomb uh, in overtime here to kind of extend this and allow them to win it overall and tie it up. But what they do is like he just does a normal bomb, but then they shatter the Winston's uh, his bubble shield like right when the bomb is about to explode. So they think they're safe, so they gather up under the bubble, and then it shatters, and the bomb goes off, and they get a kill there. And that ends up extending it and allowing them to win this whole thing. Um, or tied up 2-2. And then we get into the final tiebreaker. This does go five maps, where um, looking for team dominates round one, LFO dominates round two, and then round three is kind of a back and forth until looking for team decides to command the lead and then push like an aggressive defense. Uh, and they hold it out, and they end up winning the whole thing 3-2. So overall, it, very exciting. This is my this is my first time tuning into the South American portion of contenders, and you know they got some good players, um, definitely because like Agon was doing great on Diva, and he was kind of the standout player throughout this. If I had to give you know the MVP to someone, it would definitely be him on that performance alone. It's kind of hard for the DPS players, and like I said, if I don't know much about low life outside of what I've seen in this game. Right, so he might be a good DPS player in a normal situation that doesn't involve a lot of goats. But in this game, the ironic thing is they don't. There's not a lot of goats. Like there's goats, but they're not. It's not constant. There are times when um, looking for team is playing something two, uh, two 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 just like they are, and he's still not performing well. So I don't know if that's the case with the tanks or whatever. But it was definitely that was the point. That was the player that stuck out as kind of underperforming for me here. Um, but they were able to rally and win it out anyway. So hopefully he takes, you know, you always hear it's hard to learn from a, from a win, right? Um, it's easier to learn from a loss. Right. Uh, I hope he's able to go back and say, hey, I didn't play much of a role uh, in this overall win, except when he was on Zarya. When he was on Zarya, he was crushing it. Um, he did very yeah. well at Bubbles. He, did, he stayed high energy a good amount of the time. His grabs were kind of poor and poorly timed. That could be communication issues. Um, but outside of that, this was very enjoyable to watch, and there was a lot of energy there. So, yeah, South America is showing up. Yeah, talk about an odd, an odd time for DPS players, man. They're getting slotted in these roles that probably not really comfortable with, and they're kind of, you know, they want to go back to something they may think will work, like the Reaper, the Junkrat. They're like, whoa, this might disrupt it and might change something up. But, man, it's really odd. You almost have to stick to these uh, traditional Tier 1 meta comps. I mean, there are some situations that uh, it does work out, and we see it um, in our feature match with Atlanta and... Uh, Mayhem Academy, where the you know you see a little fair mercy, and that disrupts it a little bit. But still, you almost have to go back to the uh, the goats comp in uh, South America, man. Really hard to be put on the map, right? It, I mean, as far yeah. as all the regions, right? In Overwatch, that one's got to be the last one looked at for talent. I, I, I hate to say it, it's just yeah. that's how Latin America is. I mean, or that's just how everything is with Korea, with China, with Europe, and America. It's, yeah. That's kind of the bottom one looked at sadly yeah. and, we've and talked, there's a lot of talent down there yeah and we talked about it currently which is probably why their names are what they are right like that <laughs> that probably plays into it like hey look at us like we want we're trying yeah. to get in um but we talked about before where them and australia are kind of the two regions that oh, suffer yeah. from isolation and hopefully that gets better as it moves on uh but we yeah. actually we need to take a step back because we forgot to go over the top standings for this week oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah so i'll let's, do that uh, real let's quick. hop into that yeah real quick so you know, sorry for going out of order, but um, so our top standings for this week, we're going to go by region and we're going to go through all the people who are either who are still at the top of the bracket. So mainly you're undefeated. So as of week three for Australia, we have Sydney Drop Bears at 3-0. We have Melbourne Mavic Mavericks at 2-0. We have Heist at 2-0. Um, moving into the China region, we have Team CC at 3-0. We have TW1 Esports Club at 3-0. We have Big Time Regal Gaming, which, listen, Big Time Regal Gaming is a lot to kind of put out there. You're, you're setting the bar really high, right? That's that's a great name. <laughs> that is a very good like name. You have, Big Time you have to do and well. Regal. Yeah, yeah you have to do dope. amazing. Um, yeah, but they are 3-0 as well. And then we have Flag Gaming, who's also 3-0 in the China uh, region. So then Europe, we have one point at 2-0. We have Windstrike at 3-0. We have Samsung Morningstars keeping, keeping the pace at 3-0. Um, the favorites there. We move into Korea, naturally Runaway is 2-0, Kung Do Panthera, 2-0, Element Mystic, 2-0, no surprise there for those three, and then MVP Space at 2-0. Um, North America, first generation at 1-0, and this is because North America got a later start as well, and that's why a lot of these vary, because 
based on the regions, some start early, some start later. Some people have played more games within the third week than others, so on and so forth. It works out in the end, right? Yep. Um, ATL Academy, 1-0. We'll get into that game. Uh, NRG Esports, 1-0. And XL2 Academy, 1-0. And then Pacific, we have Talent Esports at 2-0. Xavier Esports at 2-0. Hong Kong Attitude at 2-0. And then South America, we have Base Tryhards, previously uh, Brazil Gaming House. I believe. I'm still stuck on Hong Kong. Uh, what, what Hong Kong attitude. <laughs> yeah, that's a dope name. Um, try uh, base tryhards. I believe is the uh, Brazil. Yeah, the Brazil gaming house. I think rebranded. They have all the same players. Okay. So I'm pretty yep. sure that's correct. We have UP Gaming or Up Gaming. I'm not sure on that one. 2-0, and then LFT OWL, which we just went over for 2-0, because LFT and Looking Forward came into this one, uh, 1-0 on each side, so somebody had to take the loss. Yeah. So that's our standings as of week three. Awesome. Yeah, and then so getting into our second, um, not our second feature match, but yeah, I guess that is a feature match. We're talking yeah. uh, Uprising Academy versus Fusion Academy. Or Fusion University, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's Academy University. It's like, wh- which one is it? Yeah, but, everybody yeah. should be the same. It's easier that way for yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't know this. Hong Kong, you said Attitude? Yeah, you're stuck on that, aren't you? That's a dope name. That's really Hong good. Hong Kong yeah. Attitude. Yeah, man. I don't know. Something about it. It's got attitude about it's it. It's sticking you know? with you. Yeah. You should check it absolutely. out. Absolutely. But yeah, this one, uh, it, it's an odd one. Um, because in yeah. almost all accounts, I think Uprising were the better team and should have won this match. It came down to a couple factors. Uh, with the loss of Beast Halo to um, uh, the uh, Overwatch League yeah. Fusion University pickup, uh, Jeg Sek, Jeg Sek is I guess how uh, it's pronounced, but it's former Kongdu Panthera main tank. Okay. Um, he suffers from a few things that I, I think a lot of the Korean main tanks suffer from, and that is his Winston is very good, and his Reinhardt is a little bit lack, a little bit lackluster yeah. compared to what we see um, out of more of the uh, American and European style Reinhardt. It's a little bit more aggressive, and uh, can play the shield a little bit better. Um, I guess it doesn't help either that we have Snillo, who has got a joint yeah. contract now. Uh, he is playing Brig, who I, Snillo, mis, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. He is Swedish, correct? Uh, or he's from Finland. He's one of one of the two. Yeah, obviously, sure. European. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, primary speaking Korean main tank, and a guy that probably speaks English. They're still working on some kinks. Um, yeah. Coordination between these two just non-existent uh, for the most part. They get some bash adders in there every once in a while, but it's nowhere nearly uh, near on par as what we see out of Uprising. Um, the- and Fusion Fusion coming out of being you know season one and season two champs, right for the region. Yeah, which yep. is which is important. Um, yeah, absolutely. They've been carrying the yeah, torch. But they, yeah, right. They uh, they do lose two big uh, yeah. you know two big names. Right, we got Zachary and. Um, uh, who did I mention earlier? Fuck. Uh, Beast Halo. Yeah. Uh, so, just, you know, they had to fill some holes there. And, and like I said, his Winston, when he gets to playing Changsik, Winston is insane. Yeah. So he's very aggressive, um, but there's just not put in a lot of spots where he gets to, you know, stick over to that character and just and play him out because he's forced over the Ryan because, you know, we've seen a lot of goats. Uh, out of every single of these matches, it goes to five. But like I said, Uprising look like the better team throughout this entire set. Um, besides what I see out of Elk and Alarm, because both these guys work really well together, Alarm has been compared to um, the Joe Knack of contenders because he is... Huh. Uh, yeah. No joke. Yeah, you watch this match, man. They, they call him out quite a few times because he puts on a ton of damage. That there's one thing that really stuck out of me a big play and it's not by dps or tanks or anything like it's these two on the point of hanamura point one uh it's this these two guys and it's versus uh, uprising's two main tanks it's a, they got the zarya and the rhine up there and they think they can hold it so elk uses his beat just to you know keep alarm up and alarm is just dpsing these two guys down they can't do anything about it and it, it gives them enough time for the rest of fusion's to come back and and hold the point one for a little bit longer. It was a big standout moment because they were stuck on point two for so much longer. It just really set them behind. Um, that being said, oh, go ahead. Were you going to say something? No, yeah. I, I was going to say, you know, it's it's funny because it's not the fusions we're used to 
or the Fusion University we're used to um, that's been so dominant throughout. And now that right. we, you know our teams here, now we have you know ATL Academy in the in the in the group or in the region. Um, you know we play them week five, and it's going to be interesting to see how we stack up against them, right? Yeah, it's weird because during this whole match, uh, Uprising Academy do have a player who is their main tank Fusions. So it was Fusion University versus Fusions the main tank. It was really <laughs> confusing at one point. Like holy shit. Um, yeah, but that being said, op- uh, the Uprising Academy they have a lot of potential after this. Um, they just lack a little bit of alt management. They were using alts in really weird spots where either they would overcommit to fights that were very lost, where they had lost too many people, and, and like we've said many times in the GOATS comp, you lose one or two guys, the fights are pretty much over, because if it's GOATS v. GOATS, the, the sustain is so high that the other team is just going to out-heal you and you can't damage them down. Um, or they don't use alt quick enough where their tanks are in a little bit of trouble and committing uh, a support alt, they're uh, either afraid or they're just clicking the Q button a little bit too slow. Um, so with just a little bit of good alt management and uh, winning fights in situations where I think they know they can win these fights, but they're yeah. scared to commit alts because it's obviously if a grav comes after, you use like a beat or a trans, then you, you think you might lose that fight. I don't know. They just need to be a little bit more aggressive, and I think they they have a lot of potential. And part of so with the and correct me if I'm wrong, kind of sidetrack a bit. When the so tomorrow, if the Brogan patch drops, right? I don't think we get it. I don't Dude, know if it's that puts us at three. That puts us almost over three weeks. I would hope, and so. that's that's I, weird. I, I'm praying for that. That'd be great. Yeah, because it, 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 we we understand that Blizzard's polish is important. They don't put anything half-assed out. If they make a decision, they make a decision. But you know, the people are clamoring for it. You've seen all the videos. You've seen the videos of like at the NYXL pop up, where people are going around asking all the players like, "Do you like uh, you like goats?" And everybody's oh, like, yeah, "No, yeah. no, nobody likes." Like the majority does not like it. People have their arguments as to why it's fine, and they don't mind it. But still, the majority says nay. So right. they have to appeal to that. And the fact that the the fix is out there, or a step in the right direction is out there, just sitting on the PTR. There really is no reason not to bring it over, unless they're seeing something that's not working as intended, which is whatever. But all, all that right. to say, if if I remember correctly, contenders regard right when the patch drops immediately adopts the patch, right? I think so, and I, I hope that that is something that could change because that'll be a huge difference in uh, what we see as um, the meta for this this format right exactly and then that would play in a fusion university having snilio on the team that's a huge like a tracer player who's above and beyond very disruptive if he's able oh, to yeah. play tracer uh, you know an amalgam more than he used to that could be a big difference in their performance even though they do win it here right um they pull yeah. it out but they could be stomping pub stomping people after this point so who knows yeah i think it'll shake it up quite a bit like i said man uh, getting to watch him, Chigsek, play Winston yeah. uh, is like when we got to see um, – oh, who am I thinking of? He took over for Fraggy as main tank on Fusions for a little while. Towards the end there, he's playing almost every game. It, I can't remember it right now, but it was yeah. very fluid, and yeah. his motion seemed very on top of things. It was like getting to see him play for the first time. Yeah. It, was a, it was a treat. Now I'm trying to remember who that was because it wasn't hot, but it was the other guy. The yeah, other I'm, guy. It's 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 blanking here. Yeah, we'll we'll fact check. <laughs> All right, so and uh, we can hop into our feature match here, which we probably should announce at the top. I guess we didn't want to tease you guys too much, but naturally, it's the ATL Academy, our first game, right? Yeah, this one was dope, man. I was uh, I was excited to see. You know, you you pick a team and you're like, man, I really hope. Yeah. They don't they suck. They don't let me down. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that would be embarrassing. Yeah, they us. don't here. And especially going into a game where we're playing a team who got two big pickups, right? So Mayhem Academy here. So it's ATL Academy versus Mayhem Academy. Don't get it confused. We'll try not to make it confusing. But Mayhem Academy just picked up Fact Fiction um, previously on Houston Outlaws. Um, you'll remember they picked him up about, I think, after week two or somewhere in there um, as one of their as their main Rhine player. And then Manitin, formerly of Florida Mayhem, uh, who was their uh, diva player, their off tank. Yep. Um, so yeah, you have two big names on this team, uh, and now we have a kind of a fresh team of you know guys who were used to being contenders and still are in contenders, um, playing under the ATL Academy name. 
we went over the roster already, so you know who's on the team. A bunch of, a bunch of good guys. Um, and the ever so young <laughs> Sugar Free, <laughs> which <Yeah. laughs> which Clay and I are talking about. The greatest part about this this whole cast is how they constantly lower his age as they talk about it. So Sugar Free is 14. I think he just turned 14, um, if, you all, if you all don't know. Uh, and ZP and uh, Avast, right? I think it's Avast. Yeah, it's Avast. Are constantly changing his his age to be lower and lower as they talk about his play. Um, pretty good here. But we start off on Busan, so we start off with Control on the new map. Um, Sanctuary here is round one, and Mayhem Academy starts very strong, um, concerningly slow. Uh, Shaxx on Fara, I'm pretty sure. And, and excuse me if I get these mixed up because between these games, Shaxx and Apply are switching between who's playing Fara. And I, I don't know if I mix it up here as far as my notes, but I'm pretty sure on Busan we get to see Shax on Fara at first um, because Shax kind of tears it up in general. Um, he does very well on a lot of different characters throughout these matches as May- Mayhem Academy tries a lot of new things um, outside of just goats. They, they go to try to break this up and try to counter it and do different things. But here on Fara causes a bunch of trouble. So we start off with goats. Uh, Mayhem Academy scouts that out. And we stick to goats. So naturally, with Fara, you don't really have a solution, right? Yeah. Besides, the only solution generally, and when I see this on ladder, yeah. is you get your tanks to focus their tanks a little bit more heavily because you're forcing the mercy out of the air and the Fara um, to come down and heal the yeah. tanks, um, and then you t- try to take advantage of that and knock the Fara out of the the ground. Where we don't see very much of that. I think they're just too far behind that once. You get Farrah Mercy set up on the point. It is very difficult to take over that point. Um, yeah. Beachy goes, she's not forced to push in. You're not really applying a lot of pressure to the front line. It's very tough to get in once they're really established on there. Even with goats where you have a lot of healing and a lot of just sustain, it is tough to get her out of the sky. Yeah. And then so it, it's a case where we do end up adjusting after a while. But at that point, you're so far behind on all economy and they point that out and we're not able to take it. So they take round one. It's kind of rough start. Round two, we have yeah. Mecha Base. And... This is where we shine, and this is where that gleam of hope, or it's not even hope, it's that it's you can see the difference between the way this team gels and other teams you watch, where the coordination just seems like it's there. Naturally, it needs to be light, late night leftovers, right? It makes sense. Um, yeah, so we come out, we have a bunch of important plays here, right, that show off coordination. Uh, the first one that st- starts is the fight during the, like, near the ramp on Mayhem Academy's side, where both Zenyatta's trance, and it kind of puts the fight in this standstill state like this stalemate, but instead of just standing there, ATL does this whole shift of the fight and moves it to the backside point, the backside of the point, right, as the shields are coming up. And as they're moving, Dogman is actually staying on the ramp that's in the back to get high ground because he can still trance people under the ramp while being up there. So when his trance is over, he's now positioned better. Um, Where Mayhem Academy kind of stayed near that ramp section. And then once the trance is ended and we were able just to fight back and forth, it gave us the fight advantage and allowed us to take the point. So stuff like that is almost like an an Overwatch League level of coordination, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And just the, the coordination between the two tanks, man, seemed really on point. I mean, Saucy, insane at the, uh, the Zarya, just really high charge. I mean, both these Zarya's on both sides, very good. But uh, I noticed that Saucy's builds are all builds his all very quickly, and then Hawk, which you know you see a lot of this Diva play as. Um, very aggressive, but also putting some really good bombs. And we'll get into the bombs uh, later on. He, really insane at these but uh very aggressive actually gets a really good boop on um the mayhem zarya which was um apply at the yep. time uh full charge knocks him off the edge and this pretty much was uh, like setting it in stone at this point because once you lose that high charge zarya your main source of dps man you, you're out of the fight yeah and then we saw you know another thing that i guess was the big play that everybody was talking about when it happened was that last fight to kind of seal the deal on that round where, you know, Saucy and Hawk, they match up their grab Diva Bomb, but right when Hawk throws the Diva Bomb up, um, Gator then charges into uh, their Ryan to make sure he can't shield up, gets the whole team kill, right? Yeah. Um, that That's a level, like, that's that's the coordination we li- we like to see definitely right it's our team but it's it's a it's a good sight to see that they can pull that kind of stuff off because that stuff puts pressure on the other team man when they see that kind of um, that kind of communication and then execution as yeah. well it's one thing to communicate it it's another thing to execute it as well 
Yeah, absolutely. It's very important to get that charge in too because uh, you see a lot of the times they will commit the diva bomb, the grab, a lot of the assaults, and then sometimes it just gets blocked. You can't do anything about it. You've yeah. invested a lot of ults and you still lost the fight, but if you are able to coordinate a bash, get the shield down or not, you know, destroy the shield or just charge them out of the way, uh, get a couple kills out of it, man. It's uh, it's good coordination. Yeah, and it's funny you mention that because that comes up later um, from the Mayhem Academy side where they kind of falter. But then we get a new Bonnie, and this is where, <laughs> you know, you take, uh, was it two steps forward, one step back, right? Um, yeah. ATL Academy kind of has a tough time here on defense uh, originally. And, you know, it's Mayhem Academy is able to consistently separate the team and pick off individual people. Um, naturally, because when you're goats, the whole point is to kind of spread things out, right? Get them away from each other so you can get somebody picked off. Because if you pick someone off, they have to hard reset. There's not really a way to soft reset um, goats. Uh, and it's mainly due to apply. And I think, once again, I think applies playing for far at this point. Because I think Shax is on Sombra, if I remember correctly. He's either on Sombra or Tracer. Um, but his, applies far, far performance here is great. He's getting the kills. He's landing the shots. He's putting that damage out there. Um, and ATL does stabilize around point three, and this is where we get another huge um, Gator, uh, Gator and Hawk combo here with a shatter bomb, where Hawk throws the bomb up and Gator times the shatter once the shield is turned away from him, so he can get the full shatter, and then the bomb goes off, killing them, and that actually allows them to push into overtime here. Um, once again, great coordination, right? Uh, do, yeah. On ladder, do, do people pull, pull that off? I know you're you're at the grandmaster up level. No. Do people pull that off at that that height? <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, sometimes you get a coordinated team that wants to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I, Numbani is like one of those maps that I love, hate. It's it's great because it's designed really well. It, it forces you to play um, a few different comps throughout the entire time, right? Because, you know, last point, you can play Goats, you can play the Reinhardt. Um, point one, it is very difficult to play, and we'll get into this. Very difficult to play Rhine. You need, um, you need the D.Va, you need the ones to be able to... Uh, get up on the high ground, get up onto the healers and stuff like that. So on ladder, uh, you're, I mean, sometimes you get in these games and people are coordinated, but on ladder, it is very difficult to, to coordinate dive. And I think that's why goats has been as popular as it has been. You don't have to be that coordinated to run this comp. Like yeah. you have to be a little bit like these it plays obviously are, yeah. yeah, these plays, obviously these are, you know, semi pros performing at the, you know, one of the highest levels. On ladder, it is very difficult to get these done. Um, but yeah, yeah, sometimes you see it. Yeah, and then so, so. yeah, and then we moved to you know Atlanta having our attack option. And then the funny thing I saw here was when they were they did a camera pan when they were in spawn getting ready to go, and <laughs> ATL is like putting down the Florida Mayhem symbol and then just drawing X's all over it, like all over the uh. back. And I was like, oh man, this is gonna go bad, isn't it? And it does. Um, we come out with goats as expected. Uh, very Dogman was very vocal about you know how they practice goats and how they try to you know put themselves over the top as far as being one of the better performers uh, with that in this meta with with that comp. Uh, but here we stick to it a little bit too long. Uh, we never get a chance to knock Shax down. He's playing soldier. He has the high ground, and we never get him off of it. Even though we do have a diva here, never able to displace him. And then after that, you know, applies on Sombra is doing great. Um, he's yeah. very disruptive. So the two themselves, because you know Shax is on shoulder is de landing the damage too to cause enough issues. Um, and Apply's full goal is to pick off Dogman, because um, Dogman's Zen is kind of you know, I'm not gonna say he's Jonak, but he plays sort of like Jonak, where he's very aggressive. He builds his ults very quickly because of the damage he does. So if you're able to pull him out of the fight, you take away that trance that they're gonna have a lot of, um, and it, it makes it very difficult. And what worries me here is that we stick to it a lot. You know, I don't know if it's stubbornness or if it's just like, hey, let's try to see if we can get through this barrier um, as far as challenging ourselves or what the goal was, but we never do make a solid attempt to try to, you know, at least let's swap to something that can compete against that setup so we can get point one, and then we can switch back to goats and try it again, right? Um, I yeah. don't know, how'd you feel about, about that? Attack. Yeah, I don't know. This was rough because it just seemed like they, they obviously they started with the Winston Diva and they just couldn't get on the same page. I mean, it was very difficult to get up there and get the soldier. Um, so they opted to try to, to switch over to something they're more comfortable with. And it just, this is a map that is not, it is very punishing for someone that just wants to play um, Ryan Zarya because the high ground is very important yeah. here. I mean, the shield's just going to go down. Uh, Zarya can't build any ult. 
her beam does nothing from low ground to high ground. Um, and the little bit of D.Va play that you get, I mean, D.Va can't hop up there by herself. She can't kill a soldier by herself when he's being pocketed. So, you know, you're just going to lose mech. You're going to do all that. You can't play low ground on this. You have to take the high ground. Uh, like I said, it's it's very punishing, especially on ladder. I get punished on this damn map every damn day. <laughs> so, I, I hate this map. Yeah. I, mean, I love yeah. it, but it, I hate it's it as well. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, you it's know, great. it's one of those cases where... Um, this is one of those maps where when dive came about was very popular because of the verticality in this map, especially on point one, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, so people would most of the time go dive. And then if you wanted to switch, you would wait until after you at least capped the point um, since that was the best strategy. But yeah, so yeah, absolutely. yeah, Mayhem Academy ended up taking that one from us. So we lined up one, one. So it's getting kind of, you know, heated here. And then we move into lunar colony, which is kind of a back and forth um, from the mayhem perspective. The part that kind of ca- that carries them uh, they get a quick point one, very convincing, but it's on the back of Shaq's tracer, right? Shax is very versatile here, um, and he's able to, you know, play tracer <laughs> in this situation, which yeah. we're playing goat, so it, it, it's very, it's a very ball. Oh, we don't have a, huh? I don't think we have a brig at this point, but we are playing. Oh like yeah, an yeah, anti, like, yeah, anti dive. Exactly. We have the the junk rat. We have a, which is where we have a widowmaker, which is fine. Like that combo. Oh, works. the classic I mean, high ground it, comp from like season. Yeah, one, it season used to two. work really yeah. well, um, but it. I, we haven't seen a lot of tracers, so people are just not used to it. And he took over that that point one. Yeah, yeah, um, very efficient. But they struggle on point two. And you know, this is we, we talked to you talked about Winston, right? When you were mentioning Philadelphia Fusion. Oh, and the the name we were forgetting was Sato. Uh, yeah, yeah, Sato. Yeah, yeah. Sato's mm-hmm. uh, uh, Winston was insane. But um, Gator here, very impressive Winston. I didn't, so obviously we know him as a Reinhardt player, very aggressive, uh, more of a team lead approach. Uh, very aggressive personality as well. It fits the character. But his Winston is super, I want to say defensive, and defensive in the sense that his goal is essentially building Primal as fast as possible, which he builds it very quickly. I know Primal builds quickly, and you know, tell me if I'm wrong. He builds them quickly, right? Oh, absolutely. And he uses them really yep. well, too. It's uh, very disruptive. Yeah, he's great at creating space and then soft resetting. And that's the crazy thing. Is yep. like he he if you they do a they do a good job of following him when he's in primal and seeing so you can see his health and he's always aware of where he's at and how aggressive he is to create that space. Um and this is in combination with Hawk who's killing it on uh, Diva. So that the space that they have to do what they need to do, it's amazing to watch and it's very clean. So um there's been a lot of conversations on Twitter about, you know, is goats you know goats is not as flashy as dive was naturally but when it's explained properly or it's you know shown in a light where it's easy to understand what's how it's working and this is dotes right so this is the dive version um it it's very it, it's easier to understand and appreciate in some aspect right and i think this is a great match to watch to show that off because they're so coordinated because it's so clean you can understand how these pieces are working together yeah absolutely um yeah, it was crazy because they walk into point two with, you know, kind of on the back of Shaq's tracer, walk into point two with about six minutes and 30 seconds left and unable to attain yeah. uh, one tick. It just seemed like they were either uh, getting picked off very early or they were just behind on all economy the entire time where they just they were just able to get grab every time. Um, Saucy was able to get grab every time. It was just way behind the entire time. So it was crazy. Yeah. And like you said, Hawk was just playing oh, out yeah. of mind. Like, yeah. All four maps. MVP. MVP of, of, yeah. of the match, hands down. But here, you know, you talked about all the economy and managing them and not just ha- managing them, but also executing them properly. And that's where they, that's where um, Mayhem struggle here. They do have a hard yeah. time. They commit, like, either they either commit too many also to fight or important ones to certain fights that they don't commit to, right? So it's like, okay, well, we yeah. burned we burned our, um, there's a point where they burned their rally. And it was unfortunate because that rally burn was at the right time. They should have went in on it, though, and they decided to pull out. And then they only had trans left, and that cost them in the next fight. And it's just, you know, they, they didn't really stand a chance. So on offense, ATL snowballs completely and just rolls over two points um, and gets this one without without much resistance, putting them at 2-1. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it was I just uh, the commentators on the Atlanta offense, man, they a little irritated. <laughs> they, they miscalled one thing. Um, Dogman had a coalescence going into point two, which they knew 
um, Shax was on the Sombra point one, had mostly got his EMP. They go into point two, Atlanta does, with about six minutes as well, six and a half minutes going yeah. into it. And he coalescence right off the bat, which is one of those ultimates that is easily one of the quickest yes. things in yeah. the game to get. And they call it a misplay because they, you know, because he gets EMP'd, but it baits out this EMP. Uh, Atlanta uses no more alts. Yep. Uh, that is their biggest payoff is the EMP for Mayhem, and it, it's pretty much wasted because they immediately wipe, they come back with all their alts and get it right then. It's a little irritating that they say he fucked yeah. up and you know he used coalescence. This was clearly just him baiting it out. Um, yeah, know. and there's you know that one. They're, that one they're coming. I think we have another missed call on Dorado, which you know CP and Avast coming being a little newer to this um, in combo with ZP there. They had a couple missed calls on this map because um, if you watch, so Norchetto put his video out, kind of going over some of the uh, the game itself specifically, and he also talks about in Dorado. There's a point where they say that Dogman was late on one of his transcendences, which he wasn't late. It was just that Saucy got targeted. He got full focused during the trance yeah. and got melted. So that's you know, it's those kind of stuff. And there's a lot going on. It talk that that speaks volumes to just how much is going on. In the game, yeah, there's a lot going yeah. on. I do not fault yeah, him yeah. for that at all. I mean, it looks like he used uh, yeah. coalescence and got EMP, but it, it yeah. clearly was a bait. And then, hey, um, we're here to clear it up, right? <laughs> yeah. it. We also we also get to watch it. Oh yeah, time, we get to so rewind. We're we gonna get double. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but absolutely. speaking, so we move into Dorado, our uh, our map here, our map four here, and it was good. I, I would say what? this is the map of the match. This is like half of Dorado, right? We didn't get to really see Dorado. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did it. Um, yeah, on defense here, Atlanta looked good on defense. Um, yeah, Hawk so. has another huge diva bomb to take out Paintbrush midair while he valks. This clip was all over Twitter um, and the Reddit forums, and it's just like this. It goes straight up. You see him. You see. You see him pop Valkyrie, and then you see the bomb go straight up, and he flies to get to Farah. And he flies yeah. right into the bomb, and you want to say it was luck, but I don't know, man. It's super clean. This was especially important because apply on uh, Zarya had pushed out a little bit too far and got killed by Hanzo Storm Arrows. Yeah. So he was looking for a play to get him back in, you know, uh, same even numbers, and this was perfect. Yeah. Taking out the main healer on the Pharah because that means the Pharah has to completely back out because without. You know the mercy heals. You can't you know go in there you know fighting. Yeah. So they took they took they took a big heels. fight from them um, that would have probably resulted yeah. in them getting that point that first point. And then they follow up yep. with the next big fight where Hawk steps up once again and eats a very important grab to stop a grab oh, that combo. Huge. And the dragon completely yep. misses because um, it's just a loose dragon um, and we're able to full hold. So that's Hawk is yeah insane. They had no support alts yeah. too. I don't know if you noticed that they yeah. um, they had no uh, no trans no beat. This would have been a huge crab yeah. dragon. Yeah. So you know, and this goes this goes to show the one thing you know throughout all these maps is that we talk about Gator building alts, but this whole the whole team builds alts very quickly, right? Hawks getting bombs very quickly. Um, Dogman's getting transes very quickly. It's it's like they're on they're if this is if this is what we get to see for the start, as far as growth is concerned, that's. All these guys could be an owl next year, right? Like easily if they continue this kind of path of growth. Yo, oh, absolutely. We just need to, um, with these changes coming up, if if it does yeah. go into effect soon, we definitely need to make sure that we we have a plan for a dive. Yeah. Uh, if, because if we get Genji and we get Tracer back in the meta, yeah. and there's no uh, Brogan keeping those guys down, then we got some planning to do for yeah. sure. Because we we definitely got goats down, and I I feel very confident that we can play that. Yeah. But do we have that other aspect? Yeah, of the that's game? something we. It's it's uh, it sucks because we have to wait and see, right? There's no preliminary yeah. unless they're doing you know exhibition matches that they're advertising or whatever, but. Talks from the pros, though. The guys I watch on stream, they don't think it's enough. They think it's um, a subtle change that probably still keeps uh, Brogan in the meta. That would be sad. Which it doesn't keep Tracer out of the meta um, necessarily, yeah. but it is very difficult for Tracer to, to kind of exist in the current form, of obviously because of how much damage the sun does and the flail, the combo. Um, but just the amount of heat healing is is going to be very big because she does a little bit more healing now the poke damage from genji and tracer is i don't know if it's oh, enough man we'll i hope this is not the case why, why why are you breaking this now i think the should have said that thing, at the beginning that the, they made this a five minute right, episode right. and then stopped is is the bash shatter uh the bashing yeah. of ryan shield that is the 
really big change that we needed, and uh, that will uh, that will bring changes for yeah. sure. But yeah, so then we move to our attempt to attack here. Um, Mayhem Academy forced to play aggressively, forced to play the arch, um, and stay up close. They actually do it very well. They do it very well and maintain alt economy. If they would have, if they would have made, if they would have used their alt economy like the or maintain their alt economy like this throughout the other games, probably would have been in a better position. Um, to the point where they force us to have to rely on that um, grav to pick off, I believe, whoever was playing Sombra. I can't remember. Um, but we have to use the grav to get out, to get the cart outside of that spawn area and move it forward. And then the main big fight here that would have probably ended it was this flank barrage um, that Hawk anticipated. And he defensive matrix comes out of nowhere. Defensive matrix rushes him down. Uh, Broken takes out Farah. And then we're able to push it and take the win here 3-1. Talk about things that happen on ladder all the time when you hold like this yeah. and you're like, oh, this is going to be easy. All we got to do is push it this far and then you fucking go. Like, oh, great. <laughs> Those are the most tilting moments. Not The tilting moments don't come from really good games. Yeah. They come from moments where you should have clearly won and you just muck up. Dude, I've, I've been so. there where, you know, I when you sit there and you, you know, you self-reflect, you're like, man, I dropped the ball there. Like when you have those two, those two times where it's just like, I choked. And I've had those moments where I stopped yeah. and just like, man, I choked. And that's the reason we lost. And it happens. But as long as you can learn I from wish, those moments, man. That's... I wish those games, my games came to yeah. that. I had a, a offensive Torb, and don't get me wrong, Torb now is pretty good, uh, who didn't join voice chat. And I don't think he ever put a turret down. <laughs> those were what my games came to. <laughs> There's never a moment of self-reflection. Like, I choked. I'm like, no, I I <laughs> didn't do anything wrong. Torb <laughs> didn't use his turret, his main form of DPS. <laughs> I think he might have been emoting the entire team. Oh, I don't man. know. But, yeah. But, yeah, so that... Good yeah, week. Yeah. Good week of contenders. Good, another good week, man. Every week of contenders is usually good. Um, yeah. We're going to be bringing you another one because we have the time to do it. So... Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out what those games are going to be. Once again, we're going to do Atlanta Academy as our feature matches, as we explained earlier on. Um, for... I'm trying to remember. I think the next... We play Boston Academy next. Um, this week, which is actually on Tuesday, uh, which yep. should be hype. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that to see what happens. Um, if we stick with goats, I don't know. The patch should be out. We'll see what happens there. Um, if not, I don't know. But yeah, we'll as usual, yeah. you guys can reach us at Gmail at the Birdwatchers Podcast at gmail.com. We're on Twitter. You know, follow us, add us, um, tell other people about us. At the Bird Watchers or the Bird Watcher, and Watcher is spelled W A T C H three R, and Facebook, you, the Bird Watchers, YouTube, the Bird Watchers, Reddit, the Bird Watchers podcast, and Instagram, the Bird Watchers podcast. So anywhere, um, as far as listening to us, you're listening to us now. But if you have any other platform you prefer, we're most likely on it. Um, everywhere podcast can be heard, so we try to make it as easy as possible for you all. So tell people, you know, rate and review. We've had a few um, reviews lately. Uh, which we've been appreciative of. People have said good things, nice things. People are expecting episodes. It's also awesome. Uh, so thanks for the support as always. Um, yeah, yeah we'll be back. Thanks, we'll, guys. we'll be back with another Contenders episode soon. Yeah. See you guys. Right. Thanks. Bye.